we've drawn an isolated conducting sphere and we were told that there is a current of this value that is traveling into that sphere and we've labeled that in the diagram as I in and then at the same time there's a current that's going out of the sphere and we've labeled that I out. Now of course the net current that would be traveling onto the sphere would equal the amount of current that's going in minus the amount of current that's going out. So the first thing we actually want to do is figure out that net current and that's relatively easy to do. We can plug in this value for the current that's going in and then this value for the current that's going out. So let's go ahead and do that. And then if we subtract these two currents, we would see that the net current is 2 times 10 to the minus 6 amps. Now one thing that we've probably learned in this chapter is that the unit of amps can be rewritten as coulombs per second. And so essentially the definition of current is the amount of charge that is entering an object per second. So this is an idea that we're going to hang on to and use to solve this question. Now the next idea that we may recall from an earlier chapter is that the electric potential of a sphere at its surface at least is equal to the Coulomb's constant times the charge on the sphere divided by the sphere's radius. This question is not asking us for an electric potential but it's asking us to figure out the increase in the potential. So that indicates a delta V, a change in the electric potential. So we can actually slightly modify this equation to indicate the change in electric potential which would equal K times the change in charge divided by the radius. Now we know K, it's a constant, we can look that up in our textbooks, we know the radius of the sphere because it's given to us. What we don't have yet is the amount of charge that is traveling onto the sphere. But we did learn in this chapter that current is defined as the change in charge divided by a time interval. So in fact, what we're going to do is solve this equation for the delta Q, which is again the change in charge. In this case it would be how much charge is building up on this sphere. So we will multiply both sides of this equation by delta T so that it cancels out on the right hand side. And so we can see that delta Q is equal to delta T times I. So we're going to make a substitution here. We're going to take this quantity and we're going to substitute it in for the delta Q. So now we can write that the change in potential is equal to K multiplied by delta T times I divided by the radius. Now again the question wants us to figure out how long this is going to take so we're looking for delta T so why don't we continue a little bit of algebraic maneuvering here we'll multiply both sides of the equation by the radius of the sphere so now we have R delta V equals K times delta T times I and finally to solve for delta T we'll divide both sides of this equation by K I so the K's cancel, the I's cancel, and now we can perhaps come over here and see that the time interval is going to equal R delta V divided by the constant K times the current. Now remember, previously we determined that the net current that is entering the sphere is this value right here. So that's the value of current that we're actually going to be plugging in because again, that's the overall current that's traveling onto the sphere. And then the other values were given in the question. Delta V, if we go back up here, was 1,000 volts and the radius was 10 centimeters. Now, of course, we're going to have to convert that into meters. So let's go ahead and do that. The radius is 10 centimeters, but make sure you multiply that by 10 to the minus 2 to get it into meters. The change in potential, again, was 1,000 volts. K, Coulomb's constant, is 8.99 times 10 to the power of 9 and then it has this unit of Newton meters squared per coulomb squared and then times the net current which was that 2 times 10 to the minus sixth and that can be represented as amps or coulombs per second if you prefer so you punch this into your calculator and when you do so you should get a time interval of approximately 0 0.00556 and then every unit we use was standard, so time will come out as a standard unit of seconds. So this would be the correct answer to the question.